Good morning, my lovelies. Good morning, Kira. Um, she doesn't have a dog, so she probably won't watch this for a while. She loves dogs and she wants one. But anyway, I love my dog. So I feed my dog as healthy as I feed myself. And um, she gets a really good quality dog food when I am in a place that um, I can actually store a lot of frozen raw, then I will put her back on a raw diet. But that's not an option where I currently live. So she is getting a very high quality, nothing chemical in it, nothing, yeah, nothing, no, no chemicals in it. And, um, and I make her dog treats and I make them without any gluten, no wheat, no wheat. Um, no legumes, none of those things that dogs just don't tolerate well. So this is oats and it calls for oat flour. So I'm making my own because it's super easy to do. Three quarters of a cup of oat flour or oats and then it becomes flour. And we're just going to blend it until it's a flour. All right, we're back. The magic of video, we have oat flour. <laughs> Plus I think you pay a lot more for oat flour than you do whole oats. And then three quarters of a cup of coconut flour. My dog has had a very sensitive stomach in the past, um, gas, whatever, and that's an unhealthy microbiome. So I'm actually, I have her on a product called Ion Biome to heal her gut, and it's getting so much better. So that is three quarters of a cup of coconut flour, and then we are adding sweet potato. Now, this was frozen because I cook up a whole sweet potato and then freeze off what I don't need. What I forgot was it wasn't the full amount that I needed. So it's like an ounce short and that's okay. Now, the way I prepare my sweet potato is I steam them. I steam them for myself. It is the best way to prepare a sweet potato the healthiest way. More nutrients are available to you when you steam it. And like I said, I don't like waste. So I either, when I cook the sweet potato for her dog biscuits, I either eat the rest of it because they're very good for you or I freeze it off for the next batch of her dog biscuits. This is liver and not any liver. This is grass fed liver. So if you can't find grass fed, just do um, the full, full amount, which is eight ounces, by the way, eight ounces of sweet potato and liver combined. So six ounces of sweet potato, two ounces of liver equals eight. So if you use commercial liver, you're putting all kinds of toxins into your dog biscuits and then into your dog. And dogs in particular have enough, well, we all do, enough toxins to deal with. That's in our air, it's in our water. Uh, dogs have their nose down to the ground and they inhale, you know, all the chemicals that people use on yards. It's a mess. Anyway, I'm going to blend this and I'll see you in a minute. So I'm adding about a tablespoon of filtered water and we're going to blend it again. See why I turn it off? It's noisy. All right, you want this mix. 
to hold together because we're going to roll it out with a rolling pin. Nothing fancy, nothing hard. So I think it needs probably just a tiny bit more liquid. And this is something, you know, you're going to have to learn by doing. Kind of like making pie crust, which I don't make anymore because I don't do flour. I don't do wheat, not in the U.S. anyway. All right, we're going to blend it a little bit more. Okay, so I think that was pretty perfect. See, it's holding together nicely. All right, let's go roll it out. All right. And to go over this again. And by the way, um, I always put the recipe in the description so you can easily copy and paste it, print it out or store it in your, you know, put it on a document and store it in your computer. So it's easy to find. I am all about convenience and ease and making things as easy as possible for my readers or my followers, my, my subscribers. And that brings me to, if you don't subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. Um, recipes are always worthwhile. They are delicious. I had, I have a 30 year food background, created a ton of original recipes and I've taken many, many, many recipes and made them better than they were before. So, I think this might have needed a little bit more water, but we're going to go with it. Now, you do need parchment, both for baking it. Yeah, could have used more water. Yeah, I had this problem last time I made them, but I just struggled through it and I didn't have it. I didn't mix it in the food processor. I was doing it by hand. So it was time consuming and kind of left a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it imprinted that these are not fun to make. But if you get, that's for some flank steak that I'm marinating. All right. If you get it right, they're quick and easy. So I've never added too much water. And I think the only thing that would happen is You would have to bake them a little bit longer. Now, these you can bake to chewy, kind of chewy, or crunchy, which is what my dog loves. And um, so it took a long time to find one that worked. Plus, I'm so particular about my ingredients. Yeah, definitely could have used Yep. Okay. What am I going to do? I'm going to put it back in the food processor and I'll see you in a minute. All right. I've added almost a full quarter cup of fluid. I did it a tablespoon at a time. And for those of you that don't know, four tablespoons equal a quarter cup. Anyway, it was almost a quarter cup. Part of that is because I didn't, I was a little short on the sweet potato because that adds moisture. So, Add your liquid gradually. Whenever you're making something that is dry, some kind of flour mix that calls for liquid, you want to add it gradually so you don't end up with too much. And I think we probably could have stood even a little more than what I've added. But I'm going with it. These are smelling so good. 
Can you eat them? Of course you can. <laughs> I don't feed anything to my dog that I wouldn't feel comfortable eating. Now, do I eat her kibble? No, but it's because I have so many more options. Yeah, when it cracks like this, can you see that? See those little cracks? Now, it is sticking together pretty well. But I, the cracks, it could have used more liquid. But again, this is a dog biscuit, not a pretty cookie we're making for the teacher. You want it to be, because these are baking, and I'm efficient with everything, so you can do them a quarter inch. I roll them a little bit thinner, which shortens the baking time. Man, this has just been a kind of a disaster of a demonstration. Wow. So what you will need for this recipe, you these are must-haves, parchment paper, a scale, a food processor, and a rolling pin. Okay, I added a whole two more tablespoons of water. That is six tablespoons. I have never added that much liquid. I do not know what's up. And it still seems to be crumbly. But anyway, um, this is this is cooking. You gotta go with it. You gotta roll with the flow. And sometimes you have to know when to quit. But uh, not yet. So I did press the dough all together like a pie crust, and I've let it rest for a few minutes. So we'll see. I can see under the paper, it's still crumbling, but a whole lot less. We are going to make it this time. Look at this. It's pushing together. Now, the only reason for the parchment paper on the top is to keep the dough from getting on your rolling pin. It's already all over my rolling pin, but... I'm also going to make this change the shape. Use the second piece of parchment, people. 
and it not worth the frustration. I think I'll mix these in next time. I'm just gonna rolling, you know, press them in. But putting them in the food processor would have broken them up a little bit. So that'll be it for this time. And flax seeds obviously are optional. They just give a little boost of nutrition to the dog. And they are particularly good for women because of the hormone supporting that they offer, hormone support that they offer. Okay, now we're going to cut. And these pieces, these edge pieces, like I said, she's my dog. She has to go, Mom, that's not the right shape. And you can use a biscuit cutter if you want to spend more time. You know, like a shape of a dog bone. I don't. I have a lot of things that I do to take care of my health. And I don't have time to be fussing around with a dog bone cutter. But you could start a business. I used to have a dog bone business and I went to the flea markets and fairs and things like that. So all kinds of possibilities in life. All right. And we're going to put these in a pan to bake. I'm back. So I have two pans. And you don't even have to take them apart, move them apart like, like I have in places. Um, because they shrink as the moisture evaporates. So they'll separate themselves. And because they are, you know, I've run a knife through them already. They're so easy just to snap if they do end up stuck together. All right. So we are going to bake them at 275 starting in an hour. And because I've added so much water, I don't know how long they're going to end up taking, but that's okay. All right, in the oven we go. So these were in two hours and they are super crisp, very crunchy, very hard. Now, the flaxseed does not really stick to the top, so... You know, a few are have, but most of them are falling off. So if you're going to add some kind of seed, you can mix them in. See, they don't stay on the top. So I will put them on her food, though, so they don't go to waste. Anyway, Gracie, you want a treat? They also baked at 235, not 275. So everyone's oven is different, and you'll need to keep a close eye on them the first time you make them. Gracie? Gracie? Want a treat? Hi, beauty. Can you sit, please? Ah, uh, are we excited? <laughs> They're hot crunchy. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Have a great life, a great day. Comment, subscribe, share the videos, and just enjoy your life.